Good morning, friend. It is early. If you were here yesterday, Josh and I, I'm putting some boots on, built a chicken run for the girls. I went inside after we were done building it. I had my Zoom meeting. I came back out about an hour and a half later and all the girls were out of the chicken run. So the chicken run <laughs> did not work. I think there were a couple things, design flaws that we are addressing, I'm addressing today and the girls are getting a haircut today. It's early, it's beautiful out here. I have not even had my first cup of coffee, but I wanted to get out here and I wanted to clip the chicken's wings. It sounds horrible, but it's just like getting a haircut. It doesn't hurt them. It just makes it so they can't fly as high. So I'm gonna go over what the design flaws I think were that we made. Then we're gonna spend a little bit of time in the grow room. And then, we are going to be out in the garden. My dad is coming over today and he's going to help me with a garden project. The sun is in my eyes. It is so beautiful out. I'm excited to have this chicken run, but we need a few tweaks. First off, we were going to recycle this fencing here and these T posts to build the chicken run. I'm really glad we didn't do that. They're squawking because they're, they're locked up in the coop and they're not used to it and their food and water is out of the coop. That's why I wanted to get out here first thing. So that is a four foot fence. We decided to go with a six foot fence. I was gonna do a five foot fence, but they only had six feet. So that's what I went with. But for our door situation, I don't wanna open it yet because I don't wanna release all the chickens. The way we had a door for me to get into the run was we left this opening here. I can open the coop door and that way I didn't have to build some sort of door and then I can lock them up at night. But that coop door is only three feet tall, so they may have been jumping over that door, or they may have been, I had the food here and the waterer here, so what they may have been doing was jumping up on the food, then jumping up on the coop and then getting out. I never saw them get out, so I don't know how they were getting out, whether they were jumping across this door or they were jumping onto the food, onto the coop. Out. So let's get to clipping their wings. The way Josh put this last night was the way for uh, a way to get out of the chicken coop was a haircut. So like I said, it doesn't hurt the chickens. It's just like getting a haircut for you or I or cutting our fingernails. So come here, chicken. So I'm gonna let one girl out at a time, or that's the plan. Here, this one, she is really good at hopping. Chickens can't really fly, but they can hop. So you, by clipping their wings, it makes them off balance so they can't hop as high. Just like that, there you go. And I wanted to get out here before I showered because I knew I was gonna be all up in the ground and in their business. So come on, sweet girl. This one's Olive. They do all have names. We have nine chickens. They're three years old. We got them March of 2020. They're, they were born March 31st. There you go, go ahead. So I'm sitting here so that I'm kind of blocking their door because I don't want them coming out this way. Kind of sad that they're getting their wings clipped because they molted this uh, fall and so they're all really big fluffy because they got all new feathers but this is for their protection and for the gardens protection oh shoot now i gotta catch that one at least i know which one it is this is working out really well because they're hungry because they haven't eaten yet because their food was out here so instead of trying to run out through this door they're running to the food so this is working perfect One of them just went into the coop to lay an egg, I think. Oh, lost one. Oh, well, those two just went into the coop to lay an egg. And I didn't catch one, so I'm going to shut that door. Okay. 
take them. Well, that was relatively easy. So now we are gonna see if that's gonna keep the chickens in the coop with the waterer and the food away from the coop. And I closed this door. So the way we have this, or designed it, was we just put this T-post here, and then I can open this door and latch it. And then at night, I can close that, and that will keep the girls in the coop, which will keep them safe from predators. And it'll keep them in here from being in the garden. Now we will see if this works. If it doesn't work, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take this T-post and put it right here, and then we're just gonna make some sort of makeshift door. But clipping their wings is relatively easy, and so we'll see if that works. They're back there. Now, before I go shower, because I'm disgusting, <laughs> I'm going to go run, and we are gonna do something in the grow room, which I'm really excited about. We're in the grow room. It's been about 45 minutes, if not longer, <laughs> since we were out cutting chicken feathers because my dogs decided to go on a joy run. <laughs> and so we are now finally, we have the dogs safe. They are where they're supposed to be. And we are going to take all these seedlings and we are going to put them outside for them to start hardening off. I can't quite put any of these warm weather crops like the peppers and tomatoes, tomatillos, in the ground yet because it's still getting too cold at night. But I wanna give you a few updates that are happening. We had planted a whole tray of zinnias and rosemary and lavender. I completely failed at trying to start any lavender this year. I tried two different seedlings. I didn't do any research. I just put them in the ground or in the soil blocks. Nothing worked at all. So I need to do some research on how to grow lavender and then this was a compost. I couldn't get my Vermont compost, so I got just some compost that I found on Amazon. And it, I think it's completely rock hard. I watered this every day and literally not one seed germinated out of this entire tray. So I think it was probably the compost that I used. I don't know. So I went ahead and I restarted all my zinnias and my basil because I really want zinnias and basil in my garden this year. So down here, I was able to get my Vermont compost and we started a bunch of zinnias and some of them have started to sprout, which is really awesome. I need to water all of this today. It's still nice and moist, but every day while things are germinating, they need to be uh, watered. So I literally just took that entire piece of tape that was on that other tray. I put it on here and I planted the a coordinating zinnias in the correct trays. So hopefully we will get a lot of zinnias this year. But a lot of these things just need to go outside. Look how big this tomato plant is. I think I started my tomatoes a little too early. They also need some watering. And I think I started my peppers a little too early. But since last time we were in here, we went ahead and we chopped their heads off. And you can see one, the stalk, the stem has gotten a lot thicker on these pepper plants and all of these side shoots are now starting to grow. So this is incredible how much thicker everything is looking. All these cabbages get to go out into the ground today, but all of these peppers and tomatoes are just going to get to spend some time outside today. And everything needs a good watering. The process of hardening off your seedlings is super important. It's not one of my favorite things to do <laughs> in the garden because it's very tedious bringing the plants in and out every day, but it is so worth it. So when you start growing plants indoors in a very controlled environment, they can be a little bit tender and not used to the harshness of the real sun, not grow lights, and the wind. That's why it's really important to have fans on your seedlings to help simulate some of that wind. Plants are stronger when they're put under some stress. And so when they are inside in a very stress-free environment, if you were then to take them and put them directly into the ground, then you can shock the plant and they can actually get sunburned because they're not used to the UV rays of the sun. So a couple weeks before you're planning to put your seedlings outside, 
it's good to start bringing them out and start hardening them off. You don't want to start by bringing them out and having them sit outside all day, a few hours, and then you bring them back in. And as time goes on, you let them sit outside for even longer. So it's a little bit tedious, but it's necessary if you're starting seedlings inside. Yesterday we went shopping for a few starts that are still in the truck that I need to get out. And when I was at the greenhouse, I kept thinking, I didn't start enough, which I don't know still if I technically started enough for how many beds we have, but wow. And I still have my zinnia, my two zinnia trays inside. I have a whole nother tray of nasturtiums because I think I started these nasturtiums a little too soon. And I've got a couple things that are still in the grow room that are just little itty bitty. So I figured I wasn't going to take the effort of bringing them out here to start hardening them off. But holy guacamole. Look at that beauty. That is incredible. And these plants look unlike any, any plants I've ever started before. Honestly, friends, I've told you this once. I'm going to tell you again that Vermont compost, I am convinced. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole from Flower Hill Farms for talking about the Vermont compost and telling me about it because I have never grown seedlings that look this good. And the Neptune Harvest fertilizer that's organic, it's it's stinky. It's fish meal and bone meal and blood meal and all those things, but it is doing the trick. So all these plants need a good watering. And I think I have a hose out here that I can use so they don't have to constantly go into the kitchen. So let me see if I can get this hose to work. This is the first time I am working outside at all. And let me tell you, friend, it is giving me life. <laughs> I am absolutely thrilled and loving it. I do get a hose to work. This hose was left from the previous owner and it has a big old hole in the side of it. So I make it work. I try to water my seedlings through the side of this hose where the hose is broken. And right here I'm bending the hose and I'm trying to break the hose to see if I can, but I was not able to do that. And so I'm just trying to not get myself soaked. I do end up going inside and grabbing a knife so that I cut this hose and it becomes a whole lot easier to manage with the hose just as a single, I don't know what you call that circle at the end, as opposed to managing this hose with the, there we go, much easier right here. So this has been really a benefit of hardening them off is being able to water them with a hose as opposed to having to refill my canister quite a few times. But it, obviously I'm not fertilizing them when I water them with a hose. So about every couple waterings, I do fertilize them with my pump and my fertilizer just to make sure they stay nice and strong and healthy. All right, now I need to shower. It's supposed to be nice like this tomorrow. And I'm thinking that if I get all the garden projects that I want to, I am going to pressure wash this patio. It's disgusting because we had chickens that were free ranging. It's a beautiful idea to have free ranging chickens. It's not practical. They're messy and destructive. So I am gonna go inside, shower, get ready. My dad's gonna be here in about an hour. I need to still eat some breakfast. I need to close this door and I'll see you next time we are in the garden. All right, we are out here working in the garden together for the first time. My dad just got here and he is gonna help with today's project. So out here, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna remove all of the landscapers, tools and equipment that is in the beds and we're just gonna set them right where they are but right out of the beds. They didn't really know that I was gonna work out here today and I did get the approval that it is okay. We are gonna be able to still put the irrigation system in after we do today's project. It's not gonna uh, mess with them. But I talked to the main guy. I didn't talk to the guys that were out here. And so no big deal. We're just gonna go ahead and remove any of their equipment and just stick it right next to where it was so that they'll be able to find it. But the first thing we need to do is kind of level these beds out a little bit. Some of them are a little bit hilly, but not too bad. That one down there has got a little bit of a hill to it. We're just gonna use this rake and rake it out. But you know, Dad, we might wanna do first before we rake. What? We might want to get the fertilizer on there okay. and then we can rake 
the fertilizer in. So this is the fertilizer I purchased. If you were with me, we did a soil test on these beds and this was the fertilizer that it recommended based on the nutrient levels that I have in my beds. So I went ahead and purchased what was recommended to me. They offered an organic or a non-organic option and I went with the organic one. And this is a blood mill. And we are gonna put about one, I think, let's see, what did it say? I have to pull up my soil test. I think it's about one and a half cups per bed. We will sprinkle on. We can see what the package says too. And it says one cup for 10 square feet. So it'd be six cups. Per bed, but per bed. It, I need to do based on the recommendations from no. the soil test. Oh yeah. So let me look up, let me go grab my phone and I'll look sure. up what, how much we need to add. My soil test, I just went inside and looked at the results and it says that for this recommended product, we need one pound per 100 square feet. These beds are 64 square feet. And so we're gonna put about a third of the bag in each bed. So here he goes. If you're interested in the soil test kit that I'm talking about, I can link it down below. So he's gonna get going on that. And then what I'll do as he goes through and sprinkles, I will then rake, rake it in and then we will cover with this landscape fabric. And one thing I was not thinking through fully is this is four feet, it's cut in half, or folded in half by 100 feet. When I ordered that online, I was thinking, oh, 100 feet, that's enough. I have 20 raised beds and they're 20 feet long, so I need 300 and something feet. So we're gonna get going on this. We'll be able to do some beds. We'll see how far we get. I might run down, I ordered this on Amazon. I might run down to like Buy Mart or Home Depot or something like that, big box store, and see if I can find more, just depending on how far we get today, because it is, I think, like two o'clock already. I never really explained what the main goal of today's project is and the reason my dad came over to help. So one of them right here is what we're doing is we are putting the fertilizer down. The soil test that I did was very informative. Some of the nutrients in my soil is above the recommended level and some is pretty much way below the recommended level. So that is why I am amending the soil and it's going to take many years to get the soil to an ideal state but the soil test is definitely a great jumping off point so that i know where i need to amend and then i will continue to try to work with the soil and build it up and make it more nutrient as time goes on i think i am going to do a soil test at the end of the season as well and then i will do another soil test at the beginning of next year I don't know yet for sure, but that's what I'm thinking. But one of the main, main goals for today is to put landscape fabric down on all of these beds. Now, I have never seen anybody put landscape fabric on a raised bed. I see people absolutely loving it for in-ground gardening, but I, I have this thought. So I'm the one who mostly manages this garden by myself. Once this garden um, is put in, it's my responsibility, and I absolutely love that but my life is busy. <laughs> I work full time and I've got a newborn baby. Well, I guess he's not newborn anymore, but I've got a little bitty baby that I want to spend time with. And I want to spend a lot of time in the garden, but I don't want to spend a bunch of time weeding. So I had this thought, it just came to me and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try it this year. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I am going to put landscape fabric down in my raised beds. So the this I'm going into my fourth year gardening here. And at my previous homestead, we had put the same soil that is in these raised beds in those raised beds. The first year, I very, very rarely had any weeds. It, they were very, very easy to manage. And then the second year, not too bad. The weeds weren't too bad. But last year, the weeds exploded. And I was busy. We were busy um, trying to get our last house ready to sell. We were trying to get this homestead ready to move into. I was pregnant and weeding. I didn't have time and the weeds just took over. And so I don't want that to happen to these beds. I had 16 raised beds at my last homestead and I have 20 raised beds here. 
So I am going for it. I'm going to try this. I might not like it. I might absolutely love it, but only time will tell. So we, my dad is going around and amending the beds. I had, I ordered enough amendments for 15 out of the 20 rays of beds. I'm, I'm clearly not very good at doing the math before I order stuff, but we, he was a huge help on that. And while he's doing that, I'm going around and I am starting to cut the landscape fabric. We do one entire bed and then I end up realizing it's probably going to be faster if I go ahead and I just roll the landscape fabric out and I cut the landscape fabric for all the beds. So that is my goal. So if you guys have any experience with landscape fabric in raised beds, I would, I am all ears. I learned so much from you all and I really appreciate everyone who takes time to leave me a comment because I, I greatly appreciate it and it's amazing the knowledge that I gained from reading the comments. So this is my experiment. We'll see how it goes. So I have these staples that I purchased. You might be able to hear my neighbor mowing. It's one of the first nice days of the year. I bought these ones. They said that they were supposed to be better because they are square on the top instead of round and they're supposed to stick better. We get a lot of wind up here, so that's why I went with these ones. I can already tell you these staples are worth the investment. They're not, they're like a penny more per staple and they are galvanized and they don't rust. So the the landscapers have been using some staples around and they rust really easy. So I'm really glad that I went with these. I just read the reviews online and purchased these from online. So we're going through and we are putting the staples around the outside and a couple in the inside because we get extreme winds up here that I want to make sure that this landscape fabric stays in place. Now we do end up putting the irrigation on top of this landscape fabric and I've watched a few farms around who use landscape fabric in ground garden and they put the irrigation underneath the landscape fabric. Now this landscape fabric is porous like it allows water drainage but I don't know maybe I should have probably put the irrigation underneath but it wasn't done yet when I did this project so we'll see how the year goes with this all right just sprinkling the uh, fertilizer evenly After my dad sprinkled the fertilizer, I went behind him and I was raking in the fertilizer, just the few top, I don't know, four inches maybe, and then I was leveling it out. It's hard to tell in this, but some of the beds, the soil was definitely healed up on the center of the bed, and so I'm just trying to mix in the fertilizer a little bit and then even it out before we put the landscape fabric in. So I we did the first bed that's all the way at the very end over there. We put the fertilizer in, I mixed it in, I put the landscape fabric on so that we kind of had an idea of what we were going for with this so that we then could kind of do an assembly line. So my dad gets all the fertilizer on all the beds. I go behind him, I rake it in, and then I go through and I roll out all of the landscape fabric for all the beds and trying to um, just have it ready so that then we can go after the landscape fabric is cut to the appropriate size, we can install it. This project did take a while. It was a bit more work than I had anticipated. And so I was really, really grateful for my dad's help. And we did kind of take turns. So because the raking was a bit of work. And so he would rake for a little bit and then I would rake and we do end up getting 15 out of the 20 raised beds completely done. The bottom raised are uh, the bottom row of raised beds. We ran out of the fertilizer. And so I needed to order, I think two more bags and then we can get those finished. So we are just chucking away, getting this done on this day. And we do end up planting in the garden for the first time in this afternoon. My dad hangs out and helps me. And we end up getting 
um, hundreds of onions planted, all the potatoes planted, and the cold weather crops. So we get cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower in the ground, which is <laughs> amazing. It feels so good to start seeing this whole garden green up and it's just a dream come true. So we are just chucking away. We got the first row done. And what I had noticed is that the ends of the fabric are starting to un... I don't know why I have a hard time thinking of this word, but because it's a woven fabric, it can become unwoven. <laughs> and so I, it was kind of annoying when you were, when we were like tucking in the ends. So I do come up with an idea of how to prevent the uh, fraying, the ends fray. That's the word <laughs> that I'm looking for. I do come up with a way to prevent the ends from fraying and for it to be completely sealed. So we now have the first two rows, all the fabric rolled out, cut out, and all of the fertilizer in. This was the first really, really nice day of the year. It was glorious out on this day. I think it ended up getting to 68 degrees, maybe 70, I can't remember. And it felt like summer because it's been so cold that this just was giving us so much energy. The sunshine was incredible. My dad and I got all the 15 beds that have the fertilizer raked, the fertilizer raked in, and we had enough landscape fabric for all 15 beds. Plus, I still have probably enough landscape fabric to do two or three more beds. The landscape fabric was like the parable of the loaves and the fish, if you know that. It just kept expanding, expanding, expanding. I don't it, the, the packaging said 100 feet, so I don't know how the math adds up totally on that, but I'm grateful for it. I am going to, in the bed that I plant potatoes, I just purchased my seed potatoes yesterday. I could, if I have time to get to them today, I don't, I'm not gonna have time to get to them today. I don't wanna put landscape fabric where I'm gonna put potatoes, but that was crazy how it just kept multiplying. I don't know where all this landscape fabric came from because it said it was only supposed to be 100 feet, and 16 times 15, is way more than 100 feet. So now, my dad on the top row, he went and dropped off staples, the amount of staples we need to put the landscape fabric in. I'm either crazy or genius. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this before, and I just don't have the time to weed. <laughs> it's just me, unless I can talk one of my parents into coming and helping me manage this. And so I'm just, I'm either genius or crazy for doing this, but hopefully this is gonna work out really well for me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just start stapling in the landscape fabric. How much fabric do we have left after the 15 just that- Just might make the, all of these. Oh, I yeah. don't know, look at that. But, oh yeah, that's a lot still. Yeah, that's still, that's at least two or three for sure, yeah. maybe five. Well, in one of them we won't for sure put, cause I don't want to put landscape fabric where we put the potatoes. I re-looked at the landscape fabric that I purchased and it was a 300 foot roll. <laughs> So that is why we had plenty of landscape fabric to do this whole project. I'm not sure why I thought it was 100 feet, but I was grateful that it was more than 100 feet. So I said that I would not have time to get to planting this afternoon. Well, my onions end up showing up. I ordered onions. I did not try to start onions myself. I'm going to do that next year. I tried it last year and I kind of had an epic fail. So I thought, you know what, that's one thing that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna order my onions and I will plant onion starts that I order. And they showed up on this afternoon and when they show up, they need to go in the ground. So my dad and I pushed through after we finished the landscape fabric project and the amending the soil project to pushing through and getting all of those things planted that I had mentioned earlier. So this was pretty labor intensive. I I don't know, see, this is what I'm not sure yet. This was a lot of work getting all this done. It wasn't hard, but it was tedious and we got it done. Is it worth putting in the work up front and then not having to weed as much or is weeding better? I don't know, time will tell. I just went inside and made my dad a relight electrolyte drink. It's 
from Redmond Real Salt. If you're interested, I can link it down below. It's like a Gatorade, except it doesn't have any artificial colors or flavors or anything like that. I just have some water and I also grabbed a blowtorch in case we get to planting. The best way to plant in these is to use a blowtorch so that you melt it because it's a woven weed fabric that if you cut holes, then it will unfray or unfray, defray, unweight. I don't know. It just won't work. So that's why I brought the blowtorch out. In this bed, we can't find the water line. We're keeping the water line out so that we can eventually build the irrigation system on top. So we're going to take the landscape fabric off this one and we're going to let the landscapers find where that water line is. Since I have the blowtorch out, what I think I'm going to do is go through, not the ones that we just um, put in the beds, but for the rest of them. It would be better if I had a bigger blowtorch, but this is what I have, so this is what we're using. Yep, I think this is worth taking this step to blow torch these. It's going to ensure that I'll be able to use this again in the future. Oh, don't touch it though. It's hot. This landscape fabric is an investment. So I want to try to keep it as long as possible. So I'm just going to melt and seal these ends. And if that allows me to do get one more year out of it, it'll be worth it. I think part of the reason why my weeds in my raised beds continually got worse and worse over the years is because I would use leaves from my neighbor's property to mulch my beds at the end of the year and i think that i was bringing in a lot of weed seeds doing that but i don't know after doing 12 of these i figured out a faster way to do it lay both ends next to each other on the dirt this is probably safer too than me holding it the wind just picked up of course and then i can just go straight down both ends well it's getting windy now so I don't want to stay on here but this was a lot better to do it this way but what happens if you're not careful so this can be dangerous is make sure that there is the landscape fabric it has completely stopped melting so on one of these I did not realize I walked away and I went to do the next one it was still burning and so a big hole comes and a bunch of it melts and so just be very careful when you're working with this this is not ideal this is not great so I'm gonna pick out all these bits of plastic this is really really disappointing oh that's hot I'm gonna take a break from burning because I need to step away that was very hot I did just burn my finger a little bit so I have a piece of ice in my glove and I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna start stuffing. They definitely are a lot nicer to work with with the ends sealed like that. And look what I found. This is a good sign. Beneficial creatures to help keep pests out of the garden. So we're gonna let him just kind of slither away while we keep working. So definitely, like I said, if you are going to be using this fabric and you are going to be torching it, whether you are making holes for putting in the plants or you're sealing the ends, just really make sure that the fabric has stopped burning because I, I definitely um, walked away and I didn't realize that. And so one of the fabrics that I had cut to fit in the bed there was a big massive hole in it so just learn from my mistake if this is something you want to try using in your own garden so we have all of the beds amended except for the ones that I still need to purchase the fertilizer for and now we are going through and we are tucking in all of the fabric because I have all of them at this point sealed on the ends and it definitely was a lot more enjoyable working with them and tucking them the fabric in the raised beds with them being sealed and not all of the ends kind of the the fraying ends just being 
all over the place because it was kind of annoying. So I do think this looks really nice once it's all done. I wish there weren't the lines on it just for aesthetic purposes. I think it would look nicer if it was all black. That's what I'm thinking when I'm working with it now. But when I go to actually do planting, the lines are very, very helpful because I don't have to mark lines to try to have my veggies when I burn the holes for the plants to, I don't have to put lines for straight lines. They're already there. So the lines end up being definitely a benefit and it, it takes us another few hours and we get all of the landscape fabric tucked in to all of the beds that we were able to amend on this day. We got 14 done. My dad just needs to put staples in this one and then we got all 14 done. Like we said earlier, that one over there, we couldn't find the last one. We couldn't find the irrigation hose, so we don't want to cover it up and then them not be able to find it. So I will cover that up later. And then I need to order how many? Two bags probably to finish the fertilizer because you got three beds with yeah, one bag. You get three to one. So I'm going to order two more bags of fertilizer. I think we have enough landscape fabric to cover the last five beds, except for maybe not because one of the landscape ones that I burnt a big hole in it. And so when it caught on fire and I, I did burn my thumb pretty good. I've got a piece of ice <laughs> in my glove and it doesn't hurt as long as there's a piece of ice in there. I'll be okay. But I did lose one 16 foot piece of landscape fabric due to the burning. So caution when you, if you burn holes in it. And then Josh just came out and informed me that my big box of onion starts that I ordered came in today. So we are gonna end it here today with this huge project 90% done. We got the chickens taken care of. We got the seedlings out in the sun. I probably should bring them in because they've been out for a few hours and they're not used to it. And when you're hardening them off, you really don't need them to be out all day. You don't want them to be out all day. You're just trying to get them acclimated. So I need to get those inside. And then we are going to just pick it right back up and we are gonna start planting. We've got this box. These are starts that I purchased from a local, uh, it's called Wilco, it's around here. It's like tractor supply. And then we've got my starts that I started, my cabbages and cauliflower and broccoli that we're gonna get planted. And then all the onions we're gonna get planted. So. I will see you in the next video. You want to say bye, Dad? See you later. Blessings. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.